today uh, we're going to define acceleration and we're also going to develop a uh, system of four equations that allow us to solve problems that involve constant acceleration and that's that's what we're going to do today so but first let's review what we did before last week uh, if you remember we took a uh, some string and at the end of the string we had zero and then we laid that string out and it was 10 meters long we tied it to a little coke bottle right here's the bottle not a very good bottle anyway tied it to it and then we uh, had you know uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten And I gave you a starting position, right? Um, I gave you an x naught. That is our position along the x-axis. We define this to be the x-axis. Just said, hey, let that we're going to call the position on that string x. And uh, you know, maybe your buggy car started right here. And so that was x naught equals two meters, maybe. Now I'm not going to draw them the way exactly right so I'm just going to kind of qualitatively do this but what do we do well every uh, let's say every second uh, let's measure the position of this car so this is at the position at x equals zero uh, let's let's have faster cars let's say this is a souped up version and we're going to have like here's uh, zero seconds and here's one second two seconds three seconds four seconds, five seconds. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five seconds. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four. So th this is time, and then we can get the positions off the position graph. Right, so this car, notice that the where the car is located at each time, the distance covered is a constant, isn't it? So that means that the velocity is a constant. Here's what we did. We graphed position. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. This is position in meters. And this time is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, five. I think we just went to five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is time and seconds. And then we graph these positions. Well, the initial position, the position on the x-axis as it moved down here, when time equals zero, it was right here. And then over the next second, it moved, uh, what do we say, three and a half? So that'd be here. And then at two seconds, it was at five, and then at three seconds, where was it? It was at six and a half. At four seconds, it was at eight. And then finally at five seconds, it was nine and a half, okay. And notice that this makes a nice straight line. They, we, now, even if your data is a little crooked because you didn't measure it perfectly or whatever, you just draw your best fit straight line through the data. And this is what we did with the buggy car. This is constant velocity. And then what do we do? Well, we said y equals mx plus b, right? This is a straight line. And this is the equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus b. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make this fit this. And we said, well, what, what is uh, y? Well, we're actually going to call y x. That's our position. Equals, well, it's the slope of the line. What, what is the slope of the line? Well, it's, it's delta x over delta t. And then the time, and then uh, our x, so that's our slope, right? Rise over the run. And then the horizontal axis, we usually call it x, but in our example here, this is time, t. 
and then plus, now this is my position on the x-axis when the time axis is equal to zero. So this is x, so I'm gonna call it x naught. Now we said that delta x over delta t, by definition, that is velocity. In this, or average velocity. But in this case, since the velocity is a constant, the instantaneous velocity and the average velocity are the same number. What is, what, what is it here? Um, delta x over two. Well, every second it looks like we're moving one and a half meters. In this example, so these are really fast cars. One and a half meters per second. Uh, but when we wrote the general mathematical model, we said x equals, well, delta x over delta t, we're going to call that velocity times time plus my starting position. So you need to know what this means right here. This is the general mathematical model that describes an object that is moving with constant speed in a constant direction uh, over time. And this is very cool. I mean, for this, now for this example, we would say x equals, and the slope is 1.5 meters per second times time. And where was my starting position? Well, when t equals 0, we started at 2 meters. So this tells me everything I need to know, where to start, how fast we're going, as time goes by. And you can use this mathematical model to predict where the car is. Well, first of all, this mathematical model describes this line. So good mathematical models have descriptive power. They also can make predictions. Uh, I only went to five seconds, but can I use this mathematical model to tell where I'm going to be in 10 seconds? Sure, just plug it in. 1.5 times 10 is 15 plus 2, so it'll be at 17 meters or close to it. Okay? So that's what we did uh, last time. Now we're going to uh, make things a little bit more complicated. And this is going to be the uh, same kind of thing, but now we're going to, we're going to, we're going to speed up. Speed up. Here's my string, right? There's the string. Now, I'm not going to put numbers on here because I, I just don't want to. <laughs> but let's suppose that we started right here, about the same place. But let's suppose I've got a car that is going to, um, uh, it's going to start off slow and it's going to steadily increase its speed. So if this is t equals zero, well, maybe after one second, it hasn't moved very far. It's going slow. But then in the next second, it's a little bit farther. And then in the next second, instead of being here, it's going to go like this. So I'm going to increase it by the same amount each time. So if, you, if that's where you put the paper clips to mark where the, the car was as it's changing speed, and I, unfortunately I don't have a car that does that. I do, I, but we are going to do an activity where something is going to change speed with time. So, um, but how would I, if I graph this, what would it look like? Well, again, a qualitative graph. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, I'll, I'll do time, but I'm not going to do position. Here's position. Here's time. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, maybe it starts here. But then at one second, look, one second later, it only advanced a little bit on the x-axis. But then at uh, t equals, let's see, 1, 2, at 2 seconds, it advanced uh, up a little bit, but a little bit more. And then here, 
uh, it went up but by a little bit more and then at four it went up but by a little bit more and then at five seconds it went up oh I'm gonna run out of room here that's okay and then at six seconds it went up but by a little bit more and so now when I graph sorry about it, this is gonna be kind of sloppy um, if I were to graph this like before um, you know I had a, a nice straight line but is this a straight line no let's let's see at first we, we were going very fast but then we would go faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster so we're gonna get a curve now instead of a straight line anybody recognize what that curve what does it look, look like it's, it's not an exponential curve. There are exponential curves that look like that. But it is a uh, quadratic or a, p, p, starts with a P. It looks like a parabola, yeah. Um, and that's what th we're gonna end up getting, although this is qualitative. Um, but, um, and, and look, we said uh, over here, uh, last time we said that the slope of this line Delta X over delta T, the slope of that line is our velocity, right? The slope of position is a function of time. That's the rate at which I change my position as I change time. That's what we define velocity to be. But look what's happening to the slope here. Look, we start off with a slope that's very shallow. That's like a zero slope. That means we, we start off with zero velocity maybe. But then what happens to the slope? Oh, the slope is steeper. What happens to the slope over here? Oh, it's steeper. Do you see that, the, that it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper? The slope of that line is getting steeper and steeper? Well, what does that mean? That means the velocity is getting greater and greater. If the, velo if the slope is getting steeper, the velocity is getting greater in magnitude. We're going faster. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you sure? Ask questions. Okay. So, now, over here, what if I were to graph velocity as a function of time? We didn't do that last time. We didn't graph velocity, but let's do it super easy. I mean, it's so easy, it's stupid. Let's graph our velocity as a function of time for this situation. Oh, you know what? That's really not fair to, to, to do in your notes, huh? Because you didn't leave room for it. Um, so let me just uh, let me just draw it over here, real small. So we said, what if ah, if position as a function of time looked like this, and we said that the slope is delta x over delta t. That equals our velocity. Well, if I graph the velocity as a function of time, well, what's true about the slope here and here and here and here and here and here and here? The slope is constant. And how do we graph a constant? Straight line, but that straight line is horizontal. Does that make sense? No matter what time you pay, oh, let's look at the slope at this time. Oh, it's the same. So at this time, it's the same. What's the slope over here? Oh, the slope slope didn't change. The slope is not the slope of this graph is not changing. So the velocity here is a horizontal straight line. Makes sense. I mean, uh, okay. Now, what's true about the slope for this guy? The velocity as a function of time. Well, maybe it had a little bit of velocity at the beginning. We didn't really state whether it is. So maybe it's a fairly small velocity. But what's true about the velocity at one second? See, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is time in seconds, velocity in meters per second if we were using numbers. But look, look at the slope. Very low slope, very shallow, close to zero. What about one second? Oh, it's a little bit greater. What about two seconds? Oh, the slope is greater. So that means the velocity is greater. The position versus time graph slope is velocity. But now that slope is greater, so the velocity is greater. And now it's greater again. 
and now it's greater again. And finally, uh, we end up with the steep. And what's true about this velocity? The velocity is increasing, and it makes a straight line. At least that's what we're going to do for this. There are situations where the velocity graph won't be a straight line. We're not going to do that for a while. Okay? Today, it's going to look like that. Well, this is a straight line. And uh, so let's say the velocity starts at something. It could be zero. We could start with zero velocity. And we're going to increase that velocity every second by the same amount. So we're going to steadily increase our velocity. Yes? OK, you with me? So, oh, this is a straight line. Well, here's the crutch equation, y equals mx plus b. But instead of y, what is our vertical axis now? Yeah, it's velocity. Now, what is the slope here? Well, I'm going to pick two points on the line. I'm not going to use data points, so I'll pick this point here and this point over here. I'll just find two points that are on the line. And uh, it's the rise over the run, isn't it? Right? Slope is rise over the run. Well, what is the rise here? From here to here, that's a change in what? Delta what? From here to here? Delta velocity. Delta velocity. Delta V. That's how much I changed my velocity when I changed my time from here to here. Right? Slope. The rise over the run. Delta Y over delta X, but we're not using X and Y. We're using V and T. Yes? Okay. So the slope here is going to be delta V over delta T. And if I give you an actual problem, which I will, you'll have to figure out what that slope is. And then what is our, so there's our slope. Now what is our X axis? Oh, it's time. And then plus, what is our, our uh, Y intercept? Well, it's not our y-intercept. It's the velocity when time was equal to zero. So what do we call that? V naught. So it's very similar to what we did over here. When we, when we had this graph, we had position as a function of time. Position was changing at a constant rate. So we were able to model the position as a function of time with a graph that looks like this. But now, we're doing this. We've got a velocity changing at a constant rate, which gives us a position you know, that isn't changing at a constant. It's going faster, 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 because the velocity is getting greater and greater and greater. And this describes the velocity. Now, the slope. What we did over here is we said, Delta X over delta T, we have a name for that. We're going to call it velocity. Well, guess what we're going to do with delta V over, uh, I, I'm sorry, did I say delta, I meant delta X over delta T is called velocity. But here we have delta V over delta T, and we have a name for that. Can you guess? By definition, this is called average acceleration. Now, I'm just going to call it acceleration for now but it's average acceleration. And because the acceleration is a constant, the slope of that line isn't changing with time. Because uh, the, the slope is a constant, it's the average acceleration is equal to the instantaneous acceleration. So we're not going to worry about that. We abbreviate that with the letter A. Oh, I'm sorry. If I go off screen, please, please let me know. Um, acceleration is, is A. We use the letter A to mean acceleration. Now let's take a look at the units. What are the units for delta V? Delta V is measured in meters per second. What's uh, delta T measured in? Seconds, right? What is meters per second divided by seconds? Yeah, you can call it meters per second squared. A lot of people will accidentally cancel, like, oh, this second cancels that second. No, 
Remember, this is a compound fraction, right? So let's, let's figure this out. This is meters per second times one over seconds. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. So far, so good. Well, what is, what is a, remember you reciprocate and multiply? Let me show you an example. What is one half divided by two? What is half of one half? If you have half of a pie and you take half of that half of the pie, you have how much of the pie? One fourth. And, and you go like this. You can say, okay, that's one half times. Remember, you reciprocate and multiply. So this, instead of multiplying by, or by two, we multiply by one half. And one half times one half is one fourth. Well, we do the same thing here. Meters per second times one over uh, what's on the bottom here. I'm off screen. Thank you. Just yell off screen. And then, uh, so that's going to be meters, times, and then seconds times seconds. This is meters per second squared. Folks, listen, listen. I don't know what a square second is. There's no such thing as a square second. No. This means something. I do understand this. This is how many meters per second I increase my velocity every second. Right? Does that make sense? How much I increase my velocity uh, in meters per second every second. But it, it simplifies to this. That's all. If you want to leave it like this, I'm perfectly good with that. Quite often you'll see me do it. All right. So I'm going to now uh, finish this up. Now that I've defined what the slope is called, we're going to say that for constant velocity motion, I'm sorry, constant acceleration motion. For constant acceleration motion, we have this equation. V equals... The slope is acceleration times time plus my initial velocity. Now I'm going to rewrite it like this. V equals V naught plus AT because in most books they put it in that order, but it doesn't matter. Right? 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. It doesn't matter what order you add things. So this right here is our first kinematic equation for constant acceleration. Okay. Make sense, everybody? Okay. Now we're going to go on to another topic. We're going to use this equation, but I want to show you something uh, now. And it's going to seem kind of dumb. And this is for, uh, oh, it's not. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a problem. It's really easy. Okay. So here's uh, our, an example problem. This is so easy you'll be able to do it in your head. Not a trick question at all. A person is walking with a constant velocity of 2 meters per second for five seconds. How far did she go? I'll use a she this time. How far did she go? How far did she go? If you see a girl walking across campus, two meters per second. First of all, it's a fast walk. She's got some place to go. Don't interrupt. Okay, but how in five seconds, how far is she going to go? Easy. How far? What do, you, what do you think? Two meters per second for five seconds. Huh? Ten meters. Duh. Yes, of course. You don't need. But so this is a really simple problem. 
But this is AP Physics. So we're going to take the obvious and simple and make it as complicated as possible. All right. So I'm going to set this up with given. Uh, we're going to use the variables we've been using. The person is walking with a constant velocity of 2 meters. So we're going to say that V equals 2 meters per second for 5 seconds. So that's T equals 5 seconds. Uh, find how far did she go? Well, that's the same as say, what's, the what's her displacement? Delta X. Solve. Well, we have, a, this is constant velocity motion, so we have a mathematical model for that. Uh, X equals V times T plus X naught. And, uh, but now, but here's something we know. Delta X is X final minus X initial. That's the operational definition of a displacement. Take the final position, subtract the initial position from it, you got it. Well, in the notation we're using right now, X in this equation is the final position. X sub zero in this expression is the initial position. Uh, position. Yes? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation. I'm going to say x minus x naught equals velocity times time. Well, what is x minus x naught? Well, that's delta x equals velocity times time. Oh, well, what's our velocity? Two meters per second. What's time? Five seconds. Seconds cancels. 2 times 5 is 10, and I'm only left with meters, and there's my answer. Now, you could have done all that in your head, right? We did that in our head, but that's how you show your work. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you one of the most profound ideas in physics and in mathematics, and it's so simple, but it's so profound, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing. We have this uh, quantity we call displacement. And notice that that quantity is a product of two other quantities, velocity and time. What do we mean by product? That means we're taking two quantities, velocity and time, and we're multiplying them together. Two things that are being multiplied together, those are called products, right? I mean, or, or I'm sorry, this is the product of the multiplication of those two things. Whenever you have a quantity that is the product of two other quantities, you can graph it and get the answer from the graph. Now, you would never do this. You would never do a problem this easy this way, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's going to show something amazing. I'm going to graph velocity as a function of time. So this is one, two, three, four, five seconds. Am I on screen? Yeah. And then what was the velocity? Two meters per second. So here's one, two meters per second. Now this velocity is constant, isn't it? So as time goes by, the velocity stays the same. It starts off being two meters per second, and every second it is still two meters per second, and so it makes a horizontal straight line. Now watch. This is, it's really simple, but it's like, it's almost like magic. See a rectangle here? What's the area of that rectangle? How do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height, right? What's the base times height here? Five times two is 10. <gasps> now watch. I'm gonna make little squares out of this. Now let's take a look at this square right here. I'm gonna redraw this square. What is the width of this square? What is the width of this square here? 
No, from here to here. What is it? What, how far is that? Huh? Well, I mean, if this is one, two, three, four. So what's the difference between three and four? It's one. But one what? One second. Here's, here's an abstraction, folks. This distance here, I'm using a distance to represent something that isn't distance. It's time. Now look, what's the height of this square? From here to here is one meter per second, right? It starts at one, it goes up to two. So the difference between that, I, I, I added one. Uh, one, but it's not one length, it's one meter per second, and I'm using this length to represent one meter per second. This is an abstraction. We're using lengths to represent things that are not lengths. Now, if this was in meters and this was in meters, you would have 10 square meters here, wouldn't you? I'm sorry, you would have 10, yeah, 10 square meters or 10 meters squared. But that's not what these are. What is one times one? One. What is a meter per second times a second? The seconds cancel and you get a meter. So the area underneath this graph doesn't represent area. The area represents displacement or how much you changed your position. It represents delta x. Now I'm running out of time and I gotta go really fast. So if you wanna watch this at home, to, you can't because I gotta, I gotta really move here. So uh, now what if I've got this situation where I've got velocity changing at a steady rate. But let's say I had an initial velocity. Maybe my, here my initial velocity was zero, but now I'm going to make it non-zero. Here's velocity as a function of time. And let's say it starts here. Here's V naught. And we're going to steadily increase our velocity. OK? Until I reach my final time. Here's my final time. At this time, I have this final velocity. Well, if I had gone just this initial velocity and, and I'd gone constant, this would have represented my displacement, wouldn't it? Because I said the, the area of this rectangle is your displacement. But my velocity was increasing, which means that I went a lot farther than I would have gone if I had just gone at my, my initial velocity. This right here represents my displacement because I was going faster and faster and faster. And the total area underneath here is my displacement. Even, even though it's not a, a, a rectangle. But we can find the area of this. What is this shape? You know what that shape is? This whole shape? Look at it like that. What do we call a shape that's got two bases and one height like that? It's a trapezoid. Right, it's a trapezoid. Now the area of a trapezoid, trapezoid, I think that's how you spell it. The area of a trapezoid is the average base times the height. But I'm going to turn it like this. What's this base? V naught. What's this base? V. And it's, so it's the arithmetic average. So, so the displacement delta x is going to be equal to the average base v plus v naught divided by 2 is the average base times the height. But the height of this is time. And this right here is my second kinematic equation. That's equation number two. So 
I'm going to rewrite equation number one above here. You don't need to because you've already written it down. But V equals V naught plus AT. That's the first one. Now watch what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do this really fast. We only have five minutes left. I'm going to take this expression and substitute it in here. So delta x equals, well, instead of v, I'm going to put v naught plus at. v naught plus at, that's my final velocity, plus v naught divided by 2 times time. Now, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to do all the algebra at once. But if you uh, distribute this time in here and divide by 2 and add these together and all that, you get the third kinematic equation. So I'm going to leave it to you to kind of go through the two or three algebra steps to get there. And this is equation number three. The next thing I'm going to do to get equation number four, and this is our last one, is I'm going to take equation number one and solve it for time. And I'm going to solve, and then I'm going to substitute that expression for time in here, and I'm going to get a fourth equation that doesn't have time in it. So if you take this expression and solve it for time, you get time equals v minus v naught divided by a. Okay? So subtract this and divide by a, and you get this expression. Now I'm going to plug that expression into here. And by the way, you do not have to memorize this derivation. You are not going to have to memorize how to do this. So we get we take the equation number two, v plus v naught over two times time, but time is now v minus v naught over a. Now I'm going to again because I only have four minutes left in class. I'm going to leave it to you to take this expression here and just go through the algebra yourself. And you will see that this turns out to be v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. I mean, what I did here is you foil the top, you divide by 2a, you multiply both sides by 2a, and you get 2a delta x. And then you're going to get a, um, a v squared minus, this is the difference between two squares. And then you bring the, the minus v naught squared to the, other si uh, to the other side with this, and you simplify. And this is equation number four. Now, why do we have four equations? Because you're going to have problems and uh, uh, kinematics problems, and you're going to be able to use these four equations to solve these kinematic, uh, these kinematic problems. I'm going to draw a chart. And I'd like you to copy down this chart, and then we'll pretty much be done. V equals V naught plus AT. OK, that's number one. Number two is delta x equals V plus V naught divided by 2 times time. Delta x, number 3, is v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And then this is v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. And here's why we have four equations. Because what if you have a problem where you don't know what delta x is, and you're not, you're not given it, and you're not trying to find it? delta x. No, I don't need delta x. So guess what? I'm going to use the equation. No means yes. No means use this equation. <laughs> now what's missing from this? Oh, there's no acceleration. So what if I'm not given the acceleration and I'm not trying to find it? <coughs> use this equation. No, don't use it. But yes, it's in this one and this one. Oh. What's missing from this? Well, what if you're not given the final velocity and you're not trying to find it? Use this equation. No means yes. And then this, this expression, what's missing from it? Oh, there's no uh, time. 
Yes, there's time. Yes, yes. No. No time needed. Don't need the time. Use this equation. Now, what do you always need? Okay. So, I'm sorry. I was off screen. When you are solving a problem, set it up with given, find, and solve. Use these variables. For given, try to draw a little sketch of the problem. And then solve. You know, try to solve the problem. And then um, use these. It's going to be challenging at first. This was a lot to throw at you all at once. But um, you'll be able to get it. Um, before the test, you'll have mastered this. Just keep working hard. Okay. Any questions? Oh, one last thing. Uh, you can write this chart down and put on a little card and you can use it during our exam for the exam for this unit. It'll be very helpful to you. That is all.